everybody welcome to my channel today we're going to be talking about elderberry bushes and how to prune and propagate them right here on garden jen's journey So today is a gorgeous day out here in Central Michigan, Zone 5B. You can hear the uh, red-winged blackbird up above singing his serenade. Um, also other birds are out singing, my chickens are out just enjoying themselves. And in a little bit, I'm going to release the ducks. And I'll show you that a little bit later on in the video. But today we're talking about elderberries and how to prune them and propagate them at the same time actually. So I have uh, three elderberry bushes. I have the one that's right behind me. I have the one next to it here. And then on the other side of the camera directly on, uh, behind is the other elderberry bush that I have. Now these guys, <laughs> these guys are uh, five years old. I planted them myself from some uh, stock that I bought from Burgess. Um, sometimes it's the only way you can get uh, certain uh, plants is to order through a company like Burgess or Gurney's, though I don't usually promote them. <laughs> but these guys are about five years old. It took me a while to get them going, but now they are just doing really good. Uh, two years ago, before I really pruned these guys, um, they got about nine foot tall. So uh, they're doing very, very well here. Um, last year they didn't get so tall because we did a massive pruning, knocked them down a little bit. Because when they get that tall, you're not going to be able to harvest the elderberries. And if that's why you're growing them, you need to be able to harvest them. So we do occasionally do a really, really drastic pruning every couple of years just to bring the uh, level of the plant back down. What I did this spring was I really thinned it out a little bit because our chickens have been naughty <laughs> last year. Uh, last year, uh, right where I'm standing now, used to be where the edge of the chicken run was. Um, it went right before the elderberry bush here. So this was on the other side. Last year, we decided to include the bushes in the chicken run to give the chickens a place to hide and be in shade and things like that in the summer. And that was great until the chickens started using the elderberry bushes to hop the fence and get out when we didn't want them out, especially when they would get into my garden, which is on that side of the fence, and they would destroy my garden. <laughs> so this year, this spring, I really uh, pruned most of the elderberry bushes here uh, to make it where the chickens can't use them as a stepping stone to get out. And also it gives it, uh, the elderberries a way to regroup and put out new uh, growth in places that are a little bit easier for you to reach for harvest time. So it's a good time right now to prune them because they're still dormant. I like to prune them right before things start waking up again. Because sometimes if you try to prune them in the beginning part of winter, things haven't quite gotten dormant yet, and so you might damage the plant inadvertently. So what I generally do for pruning my elderberry bushes is try to find a spot before there's a, a branching, and I will cut it back to that spot. That way when it goes to grow out, it starts growing at that point. Um, so this guy down here, you see that here, um, it's growing on the ground <laughs> and uh, I really don't want it being on the ground and growing so I'm going to prune it back um, a little bit here and what I'm actually going to do is I'll cut most of it back later on uh, so it grows in a different direction instead of down towards the ground. So I'm just going to take my pruners and I'm just going to cut this part off here. Okay. 
And I'll see if I can show it to you here. You can see how that's still green in the middle. That means that this part of the plant is still alive, which is very, very good. <clears throat> what I can do with this now is I can make a lot of root cuttings from this or propagation cuttings from this because it's still a viable stem. And that's really good if you got people who want to grow elderberry bushes because they're very good for uh, your pollinator friends and they feed your uh, birds and wildlife, but they're also excellent for medicinal purposes. Elderberry is a known immune bo booster. So, you know, the more the merrier for elderberry bushes if you have places to grow them. They have so many benefits. So what I'll do is I'll just take my pruning shears again and I'll just cut some of these stems off. And again, we're looking to make sure that it's uh, got the green, which shows that this is still a live shoot. Because some of your shoots will actually be woody because the growth has stopped and they're, they're dead. So you want to make sure that you've got the green there that shows that they're still alive. And then what I do after that is I'll cut these into sections and I usually follow where the budding nodes are. Let's see if I can get up close here and show you the little nodes there. Let's see if you can see that. See the nodes? And there's another one here. And there's a little one down here. So I take that and I'll just cut them right above the nodes. And out of one of the stems I trimmed, I've got two pretty good um, stems that I can use to propagate. And the easiest way to propagate these guys is to simply stick them in water. I've already done that, and I'll take you inside and show you um, what those look like in just a minute. One thing to note about elderberry bushes is you need two in order to cross-pollinate and generally it's two different varieties that you need to work together to cross pollinate so you get your elderberries. I have two different varieties, that's how I bought them. So when I take the trimmings off them, I make sure that I mark them. Um, this guy has a blue zip tie on it, so when I take cuttings from it, I make sure I put blue zip ties on this one. And then this one is uh, my green, uh, so when I take cuttings off that, I mark it as green. That way when I get ready to uh, sell them, because I will sell them in pairs since you need pairs, I can make sure that I have one of each variety to give to those who uh, buy them from me. So it's very important to have two, uh, at least two plants if you don't have two varieties. If you're passing them on to somebody or you want to grow some, that way they can cross pollinate and you'll actually get a crop. So I'm going to uh, take this time and turn the camera around and I'm going to show you our baby ducks before we go inside. So we have our baby ducks outside. They are in our segregation coop and they'll stay in this coop for probably about a month or so at least um, until my husband can get the actual duck coop built for them but for now they're in this segregation coop where they can stay nice and warm they're away from the other larger birds and they can just come out and have fun like children in a playground so since it's a beautifully warm day with the sun out we're gonna open the door and let these babies come on out <coughs> Beep, 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 beeps. Beep, 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 beeps. Beep, beeps. Beep, 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 beeps. Come on. Beep, 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 beeps. Beep, 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 beeps.
So that's the update on the duckies. They are khaki campbells, if you didn't know. And they are about three weeks old, uh, going on almost four weeks. I don't know if you could tell in the video, but they are starting to develop some feathers on their wings and on their tail. So that's exciting to start seeing that growth. But now I'll take you inside and show you what the propagation of my elderberries look like. So in these two jars are the um, pieces of branch that I had cut off about four days ago using the method I just showed you. And uh, you can see how well they are doing. We got a, a lot of new growth on them. And uh, again, like I said, I, I marked them with the, the green and the, the blue. To make sure that I differentiated it, that uh, they're from different the different bushes, but uh, you can see all I did is I stuck them in some water, and I use distilled water because our well water is really yucky, and I want to give these guys the best uh, growth start possible. So I use distilled water and set them in there. Um, I'll show you what some of these look like. They don't quite have roots yet. Let me see if I can find a good one though. See all those little white nodules there? That's actually new roots uh, forming on this. It's really cool. Here's another one, again with the uh, roots starting to form. So really, really cool. And a lot of growth there. <clears throat> so these are doing very, very well. You see the growth on that one is really, really good. So I'm going to leave these in the water for probably uh, the rest of the week. And then uh, Sunday, I'm probably going to start putting some of these in potting soil, the ones that are have a lot of growth, just so they have more nutrients than what's just in the water. So I will do that on Sunday. And we're just going to let these grow and form a little saplings. And they'll be good to go. I would say around April or May and uh, I'll do a video then and show you guys what they look like at that time and how much they've grown just from these little cuttings that we took off those bushes. Okay so hopefully I was able to show you how easy it is to propagate your own elderberry cuttings from uh, either a plant that you have or a friend has and be able to share them with other people. Elderberries again are a great plant to have in your yard. Um, they're great for the birds, the bees, and all those things, but they're also great for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends so they can see how easy it is to grow their own elderberries if they know somebody who's got some bushes around. If you haven't, please subscribe to my channel so you can stay uh, up with the journey and see when I'm posting new content and as always I like to say that I hope wherever you are you are wonderfully blessed until next time everybody bye bye